Imagine not being able to read the paper because your hands were shaking. Imagine not being able to read newsprint as your world faded to black. The National Federation of the Blind, Newsline Indiana. With your host, Lee Barton, and co-host, Lawrence Myers. We want to welcome you to this week's segment of the National Federation of the Blind Newsline Indiana. And today we do have a repeat guest from last week with the Indiana Disability Rights. So I am your host of the show, Lee Martin, and I'm here with the co-host, Florence Myers. Florence, last week's segment was very interesting. Very interesting. And to know that we have the individuals here that I just call them the movers and the shakers uh, with Indiana disability rights on so many of the uh, issues that we have as uh, disabled citizens. Um, I think our voting audience uh, and those that are print challenged and disabled uh, have learned a lot and we're going to continue to learn a lot uh, from this week's segment. But first we want to let you know that the National Federation of the Blind has a very important service. And that service is with the National Federation of the Blind Newsline. And many of you have been following us for a number of years with the service. We trust that the service is providing you with the, um, the tools that you need to get the information. And this week and uh, this month, we're focusing in on voting and we want you to make sure that you go to the NFB Newsline or go to whatever publications to get your information so that you can be an informed voter. Um, we know through this service that informed citizens make informed decisions, and that's what we're here for, to make sure that you make those informed decisions to promote your life. So we're going to take a pause, and we're going to come back with our guest from Indiana Disability Rights. Stay tuned. If you or someone you know is visually impaired or print challenged, the National Federation of the Blind has a resource you need. Wow, I scored a touchdown when I found sports on NFB Newsline. I enjoy reading TV guide listings on NFB Newsline. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are Relations Blind. We read NFB Newsline. It's free. I'm Danny Wayne Beamer, Program Manager of the Elder Blind Program at the Will Center in Terre Haute, Indiana. I introduce the NFB Newsline to seniors in 13 southwestern counties in Indiana. I also utilize the NFB Newsline for my radio station public affairs shows. The NFB Newsline, experience it today. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are the nation's blind and we read NFB Newsline. Welcome back to this segment of the National Federation of the Blind Newsline, Indiana. I'm your co-host, Florence Myers, and we have three interesting guests from last week. Um, Ms. Kristen Dulaney, who is an advocate for Indiana Disability Rights, attorney, Mr. Tom Krishan, and uh, plaintiff, um, Ms. Dionne Hart. And welcome back to our show. Thank Thanks you for having us. Now, last week we had very interesting uh, conversation about some uh, new options for um, Indiana citizens. And this week we are continuing the conversation on voting. Um, the first question is, why is it important for us to vote? 
This is such a great place to start because you think a lot of times about the process and what your rights are, but really starting from the beginning with why do we even vote is such a great thing to be thinking about. So really I think there are three main reasons that voting is important. The first one is that it really supports the history of America being a democracy and folks that have fought hard like these folks right here who have to get the voting rights uh, out for everyone. So you have like women who couldn't vote until 1920. You have former slaves who got the right to vote. Folks who uh, advocated to lower the minimum age to 18. When you vote, you are honoring the history of people who fought so hard to get those rights and also ensuring that that right stays for the future because you're voting for folks who represent your issues and will be in office to help with that. Secondly, voting is important because it really is the great equalizer. Everyone gets the same power in the voting booth, which is one vote. And so no matter your race, creed, orientation, disability, no matter what, you get that. And so you're using your power when you cast your vote. And then finally, voting makes a big difference in your day-to-day -day life because you're voting for the people and the issues that you care about most. And so ultimately, people think about big national offices like the president or state offices like the governor, but even your um, more local offices like a school board or a city council or township, three votes can really be the difference between someone staying on that and a new person coming in. So your interests are represented at all levels of government. So being a participant in local elections and major elections makes a big difference in your day-to-day -day living. So voting really is important to your whole life and what services are available to you. So we really encourage everyone to get out and make their voice heard. Now, Kristen, what do you need to do before you vote? Sure, so registering to vote is the first thing that you'll want to do. You have to do that 29 days before the election uh, and making sure that they know that you're planning on voting. If you have voted before, you can log in and check to see if you are still registered and make any changes such as a name change or an address update. It's also really important to be an educated voter. Lee, as you spoke about in the introduction, using services like the NFB Newsline or other publications can be a great way to get information about the candidates and the issues that are most important to you. It can also be really good to find credible sources um, such as candidate websites or their voting histories so you hear directly from them what they're planning to do for you and what's most important to them. But ultimately, everyone should take the time to be reflective and think about what they prioritize. For some people, it's employment. For some people, it's transportation, schools, services, waivers. There are so many issues out there that impact the community. And what is a priority for one person may not be for someone else. So as you think about what's most important to you, you can find the sources that are gonna give you information about how candidates and issues will impact that. And that can really lead you to be an informed citizen who, as you said, makes informed choices. Now, where can, um, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> Where can people get more information about the candidates? Sure. So candidate websites can be a really great way to hear directly from them what they're saying and looking at their voting histories if they've been in office before. Even if it's a different office that they're, than they're running for right now, you can see where they leaned on different issues and even look at what did they say before and did their votes match up with that and get an idea of if this is the type of person that you would want to vote for or not. There's also many publications and lots of media that are out there as well uh, to be looked through. And for some folks, family and friends can be a really good source if they feel like they have a good relationship there. Um, that can be a trusted source of information to help you better understand the issues or what it is that you're hearing in the media. But family and friends is not the be all end all. So I do want to emphasize that not everyone has informed family and friends um, or varying levels of informed family and friends. So making sure that ultimately, um, no matter whether you're under a guardianship, if you have family and friends that are close or maybe they're in a totally different state, they don't understand your local issues, whatever the case may be, it's your vote and you get to make that decision. And so just keeping that in mind when you hear from family and friends as well, the different levels of credibility of information. And if, vote, if, if you have not voted before, but hearing more information about 
The importance of voting is striking your interest. You can register to vote starting the day after the May 2nd election. So on May 3rd, you can call your vo county voter registration office or go up online and turn in your application for a voter registration um, profile. Okay, so what are the ways to vote uh, in Indiana? In Indiana has multiple ways you can vote. You can vote in person at your local pre neighborhood precinct. You can vote early at your county election board office, which is usually in your county um, courthouse. You can, all, a lot of counties now have vote centers and have early voting at those vote centers throughout your county. Um, and, that, and they usually start the second Saturday before election day. Um, some start as early as 29 days before election day. You can also use the traveling board if you're confined to home or a nursing home or a hospital and cannot get out to vote. And you can do that even up until six o'clock on election day. Um, you ca again, call your county election office and they will send the um, traveling board out to your home. Um, and so those are the op some of the options. Okay, now if I go to the polls, what should I bring with me? It's important to make sure that you are bringing a valid photo ID. The Secretary of State's website has a comprehensive list, but really the basics are that it should be issued by the state of Indiana or the federal government. It should have your name and your photo on it, and it should be current or not have expired since the most recent election. So for example, the May 2nd primary that's coming up very soon, um, if it expired after the November 8th election in 2022, you could still use that. But if it expired before then, you wouldn't be able to bring it. Okay. You can also bring any notes that you need. Uh, as we talked about before, being an informed voter is very important. And so if you need things to help you remember uh, how you wanted to cast that ballot, you could bring that in, as long as it's not a political endorsement. So some of those flyers that parties will send out, uh, those wouldn't be allowed, but your personal notes would absolutely be okay to bring in. Okay. Okay, now what, just what are our rights as um, persons with disabilities um, uh, when it comes to voting? So one thing that I want to emphasize here is that in Indiana, even if you have a guardian, you still have the right to vote. There's also um, a couple of different laws that give rights to voters with disabilities. One is the Americans with Disabilities Act, or the ADA, which says that polling places need to be physically accessible. So you think about having ramps to get in the door, doors that are wide enough for someone in a wheelchair to fit through, having uh, door handles that you can open without tight pinching or grasping. That comes from the ADA. And then there's also the Help America Vote Act, or HAVA, which says that voting should be private and independent. And so that's a really big thing within the disability community, knowing that you can make that vote without having assistance if you don't want it. That comes from HAVA. Uh, HAVA also says that every polling place needs to have at least one working accessible machine. So that should be set up, turned on, ready for you to come in and use. You can plug headphones into it, it can read your ballot to you, it can be height adjusted. So that one really needs to be available so that anyone can come in and use it uh, to have that private and independent vote. Now, you can vote without assistance if you don't want it. But if you want assistance, you also have that right. And you have the right to choose someone to help you as long as they're not your boss or union representative. Anyone else that you want to choose can accompany you to the booth. Just a quick reminder, though, that if you want the poll workers to help you, you'll have to let them know before you go into the booth. They're not going to assume that you need it. So just give them a heads up when you're checking in, and they'd be happy to help you out. Well, thank you so much for this information, and we're going to take a short pause for the calls, and we'll be right back with more information from this fabulous group from Indiana Disability Rights. If you or someone you know is visually impaired or print challenged, the National Federation of the Blind has a resource you need. I use NFB Newsline when reading Hammond Northwest Times. Using NFB Newsline, I read the Christian Science Magazine. 
Dad, you're a really excellent boss, too. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. It's the life you want. It's free. I just graduated college as a blind student. How can I independently find job listings? Thanks to the National Federation of the Blind, visually impaired Hoosiers can hear newspapers, circulars, and magazines from across the globe. It is a fantastic service. Learn more by calling 855-963-6476 or visit nfbnewsline-in.org. We are the nation's blind and we Welcome back to this segment of the National Federation of the Blind News Line, Indiana. And Kristen, uh, where do our voters go if they have a question or they feel that their rights have not been respected? As we talked about before the break, we have these laws that give rights, and ideally, everything will go smoothly when you go to the polls. But if something were to come up, there are options that you have. First, I know we've talked a lot about some really great information today and even last week. So if you just have a question or want a refresher on what we talked about, folks can visit um, our voting-specific website, which is HoosiersVote.org. And you can find some FAQs on there, the different ways to vote in Indiana, um, and information of that nature. So that's a great self-advocacy resource to help you get informed. If something uh, were to happen and you wanted to speak to someone, you can call Indiana Disability Rights at 800-622-4845. Um, on election day, though, we really encourage folks to contact the Election Protection Hotline, uh, and you can find information for that on the Election Protection website. And they will have legal staff that's available to talk to you right then and there and help you sort out whatever the issue may be. We also encourage folks, you know, if you kind of got it sorted out on your own, but it didn't go exactly the way you wanted, still make that call because it gives really great data for us to be able to go back and look at and uh, can help inform form our future advocacy initiatives. So that's why they're there. They're there to help. We are too, uh, and really hope that things go smoothly. But if something does happen, you know you have those options. OK. I know we were speaking off air a little bit about who can vote, who's eligible to vote in Indiana. That's a great question. And really, probably more people than you think can vote. Um, the Basic guidance is anyone who's over the age of 18 and a US citizen. Now we know that there are a few things that restrict that and kind of one of the common misconceptions actually is that people under guardianship can't vote. Now that's not true in every state. In some states that is taken away when someone is put under a guardianship, but here in Indiana, even if you have a guardian, you still have that right and can still make your voice heard. Another question that often comes up is what about people who are incarcerated? Well. That's a tricky answer, it depends. But for those who are in jail awaiting trial, they still have the right to vote. So they should work with the jail to get with the county clerk and either do a mail ballot or work out some other way of voting absentee. Those who have already been through trial and have been convicted, unfortunately, do not have the right to vote until they are released. But upon release, that should be one of the first things that's brought up is re-registering to vote and making sure that they're able to participate in the next election as well. So broadly, though, if you're over the age of 18 and you are a US citizen, you have that right to vote. If you have any questions, um, the ACLU of Indiana actually has a really nice resource on their website, and we'll link to it on our website as well. It's called Yes, You Can Vote, and really gets into the details of some of those questions where it's like, can we? I'm not sure. They spell all that out for you, too. So I encourage folks to check that out if you have any questions about your right to vote. So, Tom, I have a question for you. Um, you what about in closing here about the uh, call to action? Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, I think the highlight here is that uh, starting at the May primary election, um, but for the uh, remainder of the elections, the, the primary and the general elections through May of 2025, the state has agreed to provide this accessible absentee vote uh, ballot marking tool. And so individuals who uh, want to vote absentee at home, 
who cannot independently mark their paper ballot or ballot card are eligible to utilize this. So um, really, if you have an interest, we are hopeful that people take advantage of it. Um, they can, as we've discussed earlier, they can do a demo and try it out and utilize their own assist technology and see how that works. But we're really hopeful that people utilize it uh, and, and really uh, make use of, of the new tool because again, the, the state has only agreed per settlement agreement to right now provide it through May of 2025. Uh, they've also only obtained Democracy Live, that tool via contract uh, through May of 2025. So we're gonna get a lot of information after every election about the use of it. How many people have applied for it? How many people have tried to use it? How many people have completed to use it? If any ballots have been turned away, we're gonna get that data. So I think if we can show the state that people are using it and people are uh, being able to access the, the opportunity to cast the ballot more with this product, the better. So hopefully people use it and we can show that even after May 2025, it's something that they should continue to, to utilize it and continue to contract with. Now, a question comes to my mind. It's like, a, hmm, okay, I'm a, a voting print uh, challenge citizen or disabled citizen. And my question is, uh, okay, with this technology, the, what about, uh, is my privacy secure? It is. It is absolutely secured. So that's one of the things, obviously, the, the state was very interested in is the security of whatever tool they were going to use and, and, and utilize. Um, once they've landed on Democracy Live, Democracy Live, if you're unfamiliar, is a, a very well-known and respected company who has this product. It wasn't one that was created specifically for the state of Indiana. It's been one that has been implemented in other elections in other states. So people have used it uh, securely, uh, accessibly, privately, and independently. So we feel strongly that it's a good tool for the state of Indiana uh, and, and individuals who are utilizing it should feel comfortable in, in doing so. Um, one of the things I want to stress as well is that there is a state law where uh, any voting tool uh, or, or way to actually cast a ballot cannot be hooked up to the internet. So while you receive the ballot uh, via the internet, you complete it and then you actually um, send it back via email. So individuals just use and cast it as uh, via email like um, they would send any, any other secure email. So uh, it is secure. People should feel comfortable uh, in using it. Okay, now my other question too um, is for those that are thinking, well, uh, how would I sign my ballot? Um, how is that actually done? I know it's uh, shown throughout the demo, but uh, could you uh, expound on that a bit? Yeah, I, I, it's definitely incorporated into the product. Uh, that is one, one item that we kind of went back and forth with in the state during litigation is um, the security waiver aspect and them wanting a, a physical wet signature. Uh, that has, they've agreed to incorporate that within the Democracy Live product. I think Deanne can probably speak to that a little more um, given that she's kind of went through the demo uh, as anyone else can in advance of the election uh, and kind of talk about how that works. Uh, it, it basically, you're providing an electronic signature, um, in that, and it is your, sig your your name is written in as if you typed it in, and that, and um, and so you're not having to print it out to sign it, and then having to scan it back in. You're able to just fill it in, fill it all out online with that, and then attach it to an email and send it back in. Okay, now would that email be the confirmation that my vote has been counted? Um, <laughs> honestly, I think that's something that needs to be worked out in the future. Okay. I don't know if there is, as of there right now, anything that comes back to you that shows that it's secure. Most of the people that through um, our listserv through ACB of Indiana, mm -hmm. we've found out is the way they found out that it's confirmed that they have received it is by after they've sent it and they know the office is open, calling the office and asking if they've gotten it. Okay, thank you. They've not received any kind of confirmation mm -hmm. back okay. in, through their email. But you will have that record of it being sent in your sent file and, and, and like any other email, which is right. nice to have. Right, mm -hmm. okay. That's what I was wondering, if that email can be used as a confirmation. Yeah, I think that I think that's great advice uh, from Deanne is to follow up with the county uh, just mm -hmm. to confirm, especially given it's an absentee ballot. Uh, just contact them, make sure that they do have it, and then you will have that record um, from when you sent it and in the ballot that you submitted. Okay. Mm -hmm.
Okay, well, we have a few more minutes left here, and I just want to see if you guys had anything else that you would like to share with our viewing and listening audience regarding uh, Indiana disability rights or with the uh, voting um, absentee or any of the voting uh, possibilities that we have. Yeah, I think generally, I think, uh, you know, if, if your viewing audience is not familiar with Indiana disability rights, um, you know, we are there to help. Um, so as I mentioned previously in the previous segment, um, you know, we are there to provide no cost legal representation in disability rights related matters. So um, it's extraordinarily broad um, from special education advocacy to employment to fair housing, um, guardianship defense, um, abuse, neglect, really if there's in any situation that an individual with a disability is encountering uh, that's a disability rights related issue, uh, individuals should feel comfortable to contact us, uh, utilize our intake. If it's something that we can't provide help on, we do um, help, uh, we, we try to provide whatever referrals we can, uh, but we do take a lot of these cases both on kind of a systemic advocacy aspect like this case, but also on an individual uh, advocacy standpoint. So, um, you know, I, I would encourage all individuals if they have um, some sort of barrier or discrimination if they've encountered to feel free to contact us and, and we, will, we will hopefully be there to help um, from a general aspect. I don't know if you have anything else from a voting aspect. Mm -hmm. Sure. So, um, as they've just been talking about, there is that new option for folks who are blind or have a print disability. And really, we are encouraging everyone who's eligible to be able to use that tool to take advantage of that. Because as Tom said, that's only available right now, agreed, until May of 2025. And so being able to show that that is uh, necessary and that folks want to use it and it's working uh, will be really beneficial. And hopefully it will help uh, folks feel like they are able to cast that ballot privately and independently. But the real takeaway message, though, is whether you use that new tool, you go in person on election day, you use the traveling board, vote by mail, no matter which way is most comfortable for you, do get involved. Make your voice heard. It has an impact on your day-to-day -day life. So please be an informed citizen and an engaged citizen and cast your vote in the next election. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm this new viewing this audience, I tell you, that's a wrap. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys have gotten it from the Indiana Disability Rights, and I really do appreciate um, you guys coming on today. When you say, Florence, this has been an educational show. It certainly has been. So we want to thank you very much once again, and we look forward to future collaborations. And to our vis vis viewing and listening audience, thank you once again for joining us. We look forward to next week's show. So stay tuned and take care of yourselves. Take care of your communities, and let's all take care of one another. God bless. National Federation of the Blind, Newsline Indiana. For more information, go to nfb-in.org or call 855-963-6476. That's 855-963-6476. The National Federation of the Blind encourages you to live the life you want.